Hello everybody, this is just a short video demonstrating the DS3231 module uh, working with the BeagleBone Black. Um, I got the main part of the code from the Exploring BeagleBone Tools and Techniques for Building with Embedded Linux by Derek Molloy. Uh, that's a very good book which I'm going through at the moment. So I've kind of just changed around his code, uh, added some functions so I can set and uh, change the date and time. Um, so I've got a little description here. The code will be on my GitHub uh, and is also on my website, which will be linked below. I've added some libraries, so uh, some inputs and outputs using printf, uh, using uh, some sort of uh, Linux uh, commands so I can read files and write to files uh, added uh, some libraries for uh, sleeping and system calls uh, and then using the I2C in the original code this library the Linux slash I2C header file was used um, but I'm still new to everything so I'm not quite sure why it was added because my code still works which is why I commented that out so moving on to the code, I've got the address of the um, DS3231. Um, you can also find this address uh, on uh, using the BeagleBone Black, which I thought was very interesting. So actually before this, I will connect to the BeagleBone Black. So what we can do is we can type in my password, which is for the computer and there's, uh, there's websites which you can see how you can connect uh, your BeagleBone Black through Eclipse so you can drag and remove files and things like that so see this is my BeagleBone Black uh, I've got a folder named desktop and I put some codes that I've been working on if I go to terminal I can also connect to that uh, all of this stuff is just default and then now I'm into my BeagleBone Black so if I type ls, we can see bin and desktop, also bin and desktop. So I actually show um, the BeagleBone Black working, uh, the code. So if I change directories into desktop, and if I just run the ds file, you can see that the time is 11.44, which is the same as my uh, computer time and, and the date is 10 10 2020 10 10 2020 and the temperature in my room is 24.25 degrees so the code works um, so as I said you can uh, get the slave address read and data sheet you can use the um, BeagleBone itself to see the different uh, I2C, uh, I2C uh, modules which are connected um, here's the file path of where the I2C, uh, I'm going to call it directory, as I said I'm still new so I don't fully know like the names and the terminology, but I know I could change into that folder, uh, in fact it doesn't show up, so if I go into this folder and I type in ls, you'll see I2C0, 1 and I2C2, uh, which is the one I'm using. Uh, we've got an integer called file, which just uh, holds, um, I think it's like holds the path, uh, which you'll see later on. This is to convert the uh, BCD registers into decimal, because on the module itself, uh, if you was to look at the registers and if you read the data sheet, it says that the registers, they hold the values in BCD. Uh, and this decimal to BCD is to convert it back, so when I send uh data to set the time and the date um it needs to be in bcd format which i figured out later on um if i go down to the main file uh, sorry the main um function uh just print some start uh application and i just put everything in functions so uh set time and set date obviously which i don't need and then i get the time get the date and get the temperature so if we just start up here get the temperature uh, we basically open the path to for read and write 
uh, and then you got some error checks. Um, then you want to write the slave address uh, to the path, and then you want to. Uh, if you look at the data sheet in terms of if you wanted to read the temperature, uh, it is at 0x11, so in hexadecimal, this is where it is. So I set the register by writing to it, and then I can read uh, the um, read from the register. And the temperature is in two registers, so 8 bits and 8 bits, so high and low, which is why the buffer is 2 and then basically you read from the high register and then you add on and you do some very simple calculations uh, to get the floating point or get to the 0.25 or the 0.50 or the 0.0.75 uh, measurements and then just print it off if you go up to get date um, to get the date say it's literally the same thing we open up the file path uh, you write to the slave address the date is it starts at this register and then there's a buffer of free because you want the day the month and the year uh, and then you get you read read those into the buffer and then you can print those out so it's very simple here you use the BCD to decimal because as I said when you read from the registers they're in BCD format so you convert them into decimal get the time is pretty much the exact same thing except the starting register is zero set date is uh, the function I created to set the date so it takes the day the month and the year as parameters um, I made a, uh, a two uh, sized array um, to basically one is for the address to start at and the other one is for the data to write into and it's the exact same thing as before you open up the file uh, you write to the address and then uh, so for this one for example this one was uh, for the day that's why it's D D D so this is the register where the day is so we set the register then we write the value so one of the problems I was having was when I was writing to the register without using this function um, the values were off and then I kind of done some debugging and I was kind of like writing the values down on the on like a, a binary calculator and seeing the values then I realized that you have to send it in BCD so I found a, uh, a code uh, which does it uh, online which I've also linked on the website uh, and then I finally got that working and then so you write to it um, you write the buffer into it so start starting the address and then the data and then you pretty much do the exact same thing for the month and then for the year that is exactly how the to do the set time to input buffer start an address and then convert the seconds you want to BCD and then send it and then you do the exact same thing so that's pretty much it um, you know I'm still learning some of these you know like the right terminology and what exactly some of these libraries I haven't used before um, is working so if I go back to uh, if I go back on my terminal we can just print that off one more time so if I change directory into my home and go into this desktop then we can run the DS3231 and we should see here when I first ran it it was if I just scroll up a little bit the time was 11.44 and now the time is 11.50 so everything is accurate so that's pretty much it um, you'll see a, a link to the website blog uh, as well as the github where you can find this code thank you